Welcome back, everybody. Time Tuesday. We're at it again, uh, tying up another bug. Today is a nice little versatile midge. This is the bow tie midge. So it's a cool little emerging pattern. Uh, best suited, in my opinion, for still water. But if you time down small enough, no reason you can't fish them uh, on rivers as well. Tail waters, free stones. Midge is pretty much everywhere. So good bugs to have around. Um, and this is just a black variation with a little bit of red wire on there that we're going to spin up for you today. Starting out, as usual, we got our TMCO 200R, and I'm going to go ahead and crimp the barb. Don't need that on this hook, that's for sure. And get it locked in our vise. Make sure she's nice and secure, and start tying. So the thread I'm going to use, a little bit of nano silk. I got just some 30 denier in black. So really a good all-around thread. You can tie a lot of different flies with this thread, but it works really well on this particular bug. Nano silk so slick that a lot of times I'm laying down a lot of extra locking wraps before I come through and actually clip off my thread. Just helps keep everything in place while you get going. And then I'm gonna make a quick thread base all the way back, on down the bend a little ways, and on back up, build a base that we're gonna attach our wire to. And I'm using kind of a thick wire for this size pattern today for some large segmentation. You can downsize this if you choose, if you wanted it to be a little more subtle, but I'm gonna use some brassy in red here. Brassy wire from UTC, good old red, always a, Good trigger color to have on a fly. And we will secure that on the side. And wander on back. Don't have to be too worried about our thread wraps because we're going to dub the body of this fly. And that's also why I like doing the brassy size wire. Because since I'm going to have this super fine dubbing, we're going to do just black super fine dubbing here. Uh, you can lay down a good body and then sort of get the wire to bite down into the material a little bit. So, uh, but again, you can size down that wire if you choose to do so. And we'll just noodle it on up. And I use a little bit of wax a lot of times. I just get a little on my fingers, just how I prefer to do it. I know a lot of people will wax their threads, but I tend to wax my fingers. And then I gotta go clean my hands afterwards, but it helps me get a nice tight noodle on there. So we'll get that going and make ourselves a nice abdomen to this midge all the way up to where the thorax is going to be. Super easy and quick, leaving ourselves plenty of room, one and a half, two hook eyes back so that we can tie in what is gonna be our wing bud and a little bit of an emerging foam here. But before we do so, we'll go ahead and wrap our wire right on up, some nice tension. I support my hook sometimes as I go through because it's such a long shanked hook, this 200R, that I like to support it as I wrap and make sure that my wire is nice and snug. And then once we get to where that thread's waiting for us, Go ahead and capture it. Like I said, this is one of my favorite still water flies. It's a great little chronomid style midge. You can tie it in a range of sizes. This is an 18 that we're doing today. It's a very long shank, like I said, 18. The 200R is a 3X long. It's got a semi drop point um, to it on that hook bend with a straight eye, just a very classic, widely used hook. And make sure that wire is not gonna go anywhere on, on us and we can tie in our next material here. And that's gonna be some of this razor foam. Uh, so you've seen us use it in videos before. The razor foam comes in two sizes, the 0.1 millimeter and the 0.5 millimeter. For this fly, I'm gonna use the 0.1 millimeter. And I'm gonna utilize on this hook that gape is perfect for the width of the foam that I want. So I'm gonna cut it right to that 
dimension, that width. And then we can tie that right in here. And we're just going to leave this hanging off the back for now. And then we're going to add some gills. And the gills on this pattern are going to be, I think it's Antron typically that's used. I'm going to substitute this McFlylon polypost. Just really easy to tie in. Um, all you got to do is take a hank of it. You can comb it out to get those fibers to break free. Like so. And then a small section is all we need. This is going to be way more than we need. We'll trim it down. I always like to tie in more than I need and then thin it. But the bow tie, I believe, comes from this portion of the fly, right? Because we're going to tie this in perpendicular to the hook. So a couple of wraps going crossways, and then we'll flip and go the opposite way around. And that'll give us the cross wraps that'll help it go in the direction that we need it to. Just perpendicular again to that hook shank. A couple of wraps there. And then we can trim it down a bit. And get rid of some of that excess. I like to do it fairly haphazardly to get it to be kind of a natural, you know, feathered sort of look, I suppose. And round it off a little bit. There's a great little still water dropper fly. Sometimes you can sink this down quite a ways using a heavier bug or split shot. Get it down into the zone where you're finding fish and then let it rise. Fish it on a sinking line. Fish it under an indicator with some heavier bugs, some split shot. Let it sink and then get it to rise up in that column. And that'll really good fish to circle around and want to eat it. To clean it up a little bit here on the front end, I'm going to add a little more dubbing. And we're just going to sort of mirror how we wrapped our thread here to give it a bit of a base, mostly for underneath. So we'll do a couple of crossing wraps throughout, some wraps behind, and then we'll wrap in front of it as well. Don't need a whole lot. And we just need to leave ourselves a little room on the front end here to pull that foam over. But we'll check underneath and make sure we're covering everything up. Let's go back and make sure we do. It's a little better. And then we're going to pull that foam right over the top. Hold it in place, give it a couple of wraps. This nano silk you want to be fairly gentle with because you can cut right through that foam if you're not careful. So I usually just do a couple of fairly loose wraps and then I'll sneak underneath and really give it some securing wraps behind the hook eye there. We can come in and clip that off about the same length of the thorax section to leave ourselves some foam sticking out, something to kind of be on the front end of the fly. And then sneak in and whip finish it off. So if you're fishing early season, still water, this is a great little bug to have even throughout the summer as well. Get it into the right place. If the fish are cruising shallow, fish it in that water. If you got to get it 20 feet deep sometimes in the middle of the summer when it's hot, sunny, and fish are deep, this can still be a good pattern to utilize if you get it down to them and kind of utilize that action um, of an emerging bug. So cool little pattern, the bow tie midge, simple to tie. You can do it in different color variations, obviously, like most flies. Um, but this black and red combo is a great one to have with that white foam. Um, just a super deadly little still water bug that translates great uh, to rivers, tailwaters, in that smaller size as well. So bow tie midge, give it a shot. Thanks for watching.